is up guys, welcome back. Oh, this video is so long overdue. I looked and it's been um almost three years since I made my last iteration of this video. I have a much better camera now, so that's great news for everyone involved. But today is going to be my best and worst skin tints video. I'm going to swatch them all on my face. I have stuff all the way from the barest of the bare, like almost zero coverage, all the way up to things that you might not even count as skin tints. Most of my foundations I kind of could be skin tints because I can spread them thinly enough. I own maybe like four or five, speaking of someone who reviews makeup, you know, no one should, no one should own four or five foundations that they never touch, but I own like four or five foundations that are like full coverage or more matte or what have you. My lip gloss is aggressive right now. Um, but I have collected anything that you might possibly be curious about as far as comparison into a little bag down here. And we are going to like, I'm completely bare faced right now with the exception of like my, you know, I brushed my brows up and I put some lip gloss on, but uh, yeah. And I'm going to just like try and show you guys as close as I possibly can all the nuance differences in finish in the shades that I have, as well as the coverage levels, and tell you guys kind of my opinion too, having gotten a lot of experience with all these formulas as well. Being barefaced does lend itself also quite well to thanking today's sponsor. You guys, this is a dream sponsorship for me. I have loved Osea for so long. Anybody who's been with my channel for a long time, you know the red algae mask, ride or die. During my pregnancy, I went so hard <laughs> for the anti-aging body balm. I emptied like three or four of those just during my pregnancy. But today I am helping them announce their brand new AHA product. So I have her right here and I have been using this for over a month now. This is the Osea Sea Glow Overnight Serum and it's an AHA treatment. You know, as I'm getting older, right? We're all, we're all getting older, God willing. The thing that I mainly notice, it's not so much that my skin looks like old or something like that. It's just that it doesn't bounce back as easily. It's not, it doesn't recover as quickly from stress. And so I found that while in some cases I need to befriend a little bit of my pigmentation because stressing my skin out unnecessarily, it costs me more in the long term of like trying to actually recover my moisture, but also that like every little part of my routine counts towards whether or not I wake up with like dull skin, which my skin is very, very prone to dullness. It always has been or brightened skin. That is just a lot less work to get it to like look alive again. And for me, that's meant something that is both doing the job of helping cell turnover, which is why I've, I've relied on AHAs for years and years and years for that reason. Like I said, even when I was very young and had acne and things like that, my skin is prone to dullness. I do rely heavily on different AHAs and things like that to help cell turnover, but to have something that also helps to maintain my moisture barrier because recovering it gets harder and harder every year. You only have to use it once or twice a week. It is super, super gentle. I experienced absolutely no sensitivity from it. It's great in my experience for sensitive skin, which is a hard thing to recommend when it comes to an effective AHA that really does help with brightening because a lot of times you are dealing with irritation, sometimes even peeling. Since I've been using this, I have noticed that like when I wake up in the morning, everything is just a lot brighter. Dullness kind of manifests as just like this general sallow to my skin. And I definitely notice the difference when I use this and the results do last. Definitely always make sure that you're using an SPF during the day when you're using any kind of active like this, because this is an 11% AHA. It's got phytic acid and fruit enzymes, and it's got fermented shiunko oil. So I love fermented skincare of any kind. It's just kind of nature's <laughs> built-in intelligence for helping you maintain your microbiome. Spirulina and Osea does hinge in a lot of ways on seaweed. Seaweed is another thing that just my skin really, really seems to enjoy. I have also been kind of complimenting this routine with a couple of other things. So they did send me these things and I have gotten really, really hooked on them, but I'm not really surprised by that. Like I said, this is a dream partnership for me. So they're hyaluronic C serum. I've been using this morning and night. It's so lovely. It's like this really beautiful gel. Boop. It's a phenomenal like first 
thing on my skin after I wash my face. My skin just goes, you know, you leave a little bit of moisture on your face, a little bit of water on your face when you put a hyaluronic acid on and it just kind of helps it absorb that. I have also been loving this little combo on my skin. You guys know I have the most sensitive body skin. The most sensitive body skin. I cannot deal with things that are really heavily fragranced. This combo right here is just like next level. This is the Andaria Algae Body Oil and the Andaria Algae Body Butter. When I say, like this is the small tub, I've already added the big one to cart because the, hmm, 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 oh, it's just so nice. It's not at all vanishing. You know what I mean? I love something that feels both nourishing and occlusive. My hands are just wrecked all the time. It is just the most like luxurious, yummy, yummy, yummy. The thing that I have always loved about Osea, you know, the reason that I originally found them is because they're clean, vegan, cruelty-free, they're made in America, they're made in California, and they are climate neutral. So they really hit all the marks for me as far as conscious beauty is concerned. That was originally how I found them. That, and I just have always really appreciated how gentle their products are. There's something just to be said for the fact that I know I can trust their products to have a lot of ingenuity in them, but also to hold up the other end of the bargain in terms of like taking care of my skin. So I also, <laughs> I also added to cart the entire set of all three of the algae masks. They have a red algae mask, a white algae mask, and a black algae mask. But yeah, I hope that you guys will check out the link below. I will share all of these products and you guys can shop them if you are interested. And I wanna thank Osea again for partnering with me for this and also for giving me a nice glowing canvas to apply swatches of foundation on today. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and jump in. I am so excited to do this video in 4K. I'm so excited. Previously, I really felt like we were grasping at straws. I was like, I hope you guys can see. So here's my face. That um, AHA also has really helped with this thing was a monster. It was like a, you need to get on antibiotics level kind of blemish, but um, I didn't because I don't want to land myself in the emergency room again. If you guys haven't been on my channel for a long time, I'm suffering with a sinus infection and also this situation right now because the last time they put me on antibiotics, it just completely wiped out my gut microbiome. I got colitis and I landed myself in the emergency room. So that's a little bit about me. <laughs> Let's talk about foundations. All right, we're going to start with like the least coverage possible. Always like the landmark product for me is the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. And I made you guys a spreadsheet. Yes, I know, you're welcome. And it's going to have my arbitrary scale of coverage for all of these and um, the finish and my ideal shade. So I'm going to start with the Glossier here. I'm gonna just start on my forehead this time because it makes it easier to see initially, especially for something that has really low coverage. I have this in the shade G11. And that is without even like, spread. that's me trying to build it, <laughs> you know, in order for you to be able to see it. It is almost just a texture on the skin. I could probably wear several of the shades of this just because it goes so thin on the skin that like, it almost isn't there. You can see it has just a very, very, very faint level of coverage, and that is why we're starting there. That was the Glossier Skin Tint in G11. This is going to be a very nuanced video. Um, but yeah, as far as my opinion is concerned, I've always liked the Glossier Skin Tint. It's a lovely, lovely product. I just don't reach for it that much because I like a little more coverage than that. And then we have the Chantecaille Future Skin Cushion. I have this in the shade Aura. If you ever find that your cushion is like really, really sad, you can just take tweezers or your little pincers, your hands, and flip the, the sponge over, the little cushion over. Like, meep, 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 meep. Wow, I know, right? This one costs some big bucks. It's uh, $128, you get two cushions, but it's still wackadoodle expensive. And um, I might've just put that right on top of the, glo uh, the Glossier one. I mean, who's, who's to know really, right? And maybe I'll just end up with a very, very perfected kind of blurred face by the end of this because they'll all run together. But uh, yeah, we're talking about 
uh, maybe 0.75 in terms of coverage. Then we have the Rose Ink. I have this in 020, and this is the Skin Enhanced Luminous Tinted Serum. I really like this. I like it better than the Chanel just because the Chanel has a fragrance and is more expensive. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this on the back of my hand. It has the micro encapsulation in it, and so you have to rub it together to get the pigment to kind of release. <laughs> We're still talking about like not even at a one yet in terms of coverage. Maybe I'll turn my light down even more. I can always brighten it up in post, but if you top out, you lose detail. Is that even helpful? <laughs> Normally I don't shoot in this low of light because I can't see what I'm doing, but that's actually not that important in this video. So I do really like this stuff. Let's go ahead and swatch the Chanel next to it because why not? They're the same thing. The Chanel Le Beige, I have this in the shade light. Yeah, it's got that Chanel Fragrance. I'm really trying to, it's silly. It's silly that I'm trying to build something like this for demonstration purposes, you know, because it's like the whole idea is that it doesn't build. The whole idea is that it's just this like, I don't need a whole lot of makeup. I'm perfect the way that I am. I'm not like other girls, I'm Satan. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I like that meme, that's just the meme that I like. Anyway, I, just, <laughs> I appreciate you guys for always taking me with a gigantic tablespoon of salt. But uh, yeah, we still haven't gotten into really Coverageville at all yet. And of those, I really like the Glossier. I appreciate the existence of the Chantecaille. My mother loves it, my mother is in her 60s and it is so beautifully blurring on mature skin. For me, I would like a little bit more, but it's so pretty. It is. I just can't convince anybody that it's like so special you need to spend $128 on it. That's all. But yeah, and then I would recommend the rose ink over the Chanel just because they are basically the same thing and the rose ink is less expensive and doesn't have a fragrance and has a better shade range. Let's talk about well people. This guy's like 30 bucks. This is the Well People Biotint SPF 30 Tint and Moisturizer. I like this a lot because it's like very, very glowy. And it's actually pretty like thick and serum -y. It almost kind of feels like the Auric Glow Lust right when you dispense it. Like it has this really lovely, like, I don't know, like emollient but like thick presence on the skin. It feels secure when you put it on, you're like, yeah. Like it feels like your skin's gonna just drink it up. Don't recommend it for oily skin. But for people like me, my skin is just like, yes, give me all of that hydration. So you can, can you see? I do not know. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can get a little coverage out of it, but it's still like, it's just not really meant for that, you know? <laughs> see it a little bit? There you go. Yeah but it's really, really glowy. If you want like the most hydrating skin tint, go with this. It is so, so hydrating. Feels like a, like a big fat emollient skincare product in the best way possible. Okay, next, I think I'm gonna do the Chantecaille Future Skin Gel. I love this stuff, as you can tell by how much of it I've used. So this is, a mere $78, unless they've raised the price recently. And I would say it's got like twice as much coverage, honestly, as the cushion. They're just different customers. Eh, I'm not even sure they're different customers. They're different makeups. It's just weird that they call them both future skin. So I'm gonna put her here. This is just one of the most beautifully perfecting, gel weight, oh, nourishing, blurring, skin finishes. <laughs> I really like this stuff. I really hate to tell anybody to spend this much money on anything, but anybody who does is like, gosh darn it, that's special, okay? And your skin just really drinks it up. It's so nice. It's so nice. You just, mm. can, I don't know, can you see the difference between like no makeup and that Chantecai? It's very subtle, but it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And it wears really, really beautifully. Like almost all day. The Lisa Eldridge wears longer, but it has a little more coverage too. It's just a little bit more stable of a product. But I mean, it's just, it really, really looks like great skin. That's what it looks like. I feel like that was a little more coverage than I was like ready to introduce. I don't know, you can build that one pretty well. 
I'm gonna go with this next. This is the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Light Revealer. This is Bay, like the youth say. I love this so much. This is in the shade OW1 Pearl, and I'm really, really hoping that the 4K, the HD of it all, helps me show you guys what the finish of this looks like because it's not like anything else. Can you see that? It just has this crazy light catching quality to it that even when it dries down, it just adds this like wild light distortion to your skin where like I can still see plenty of my skin through it, but it's more perfected than I usually get with this little coverage. I think that's the really special thing about the Laura Mercier, the new Tinted Moisturizer Light Revealer, is that it is less coverage, but more perfecting. They just managed to like blur the skin without adding a lot of like pigment. And it's just so special. It's so special. There, it's, I can feel it drying down. And you can see how just in that one area right there, like the light hits it in the most beautiful, flattering, blurred way. I hope you can see that. Maybe it just helps to hear me talk about them. IDK, but that one's really special. All right, let's go Lisa Eldridge next. This is a foundation and so is the Chantecaille. Some of these call themselves foundations. So like, you know, it's just more about how I feel about them, I guess. This is why you came to my channel. The Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin. I have this in the shade three. These are some of the most flexible shades that I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of people I know wear very, very different shades. It's just a very wide shade range. And I did a wear test where I compared this to the Chantecaille because I do think that they are fairly similar, but it does have a bit more coverage and a little more wear time. And <laughs> it's only $61, so. You can see that that had a little bit of like a mattifying effect or like a satinifying effect, kind of like the Laura Mercier does, but you can see like these up here are still a lot dewier, especially where we put that well people. The well people is still like <laughs> glowing like I just put aloe on my face, you know? And these are like blurred. Can you see that? <laughs> this is such a silly video. This is why I've been putting it off is because I'm like, I just, not sure that like anybody can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I have the M Cosmetics. This is the Daydream Cushion Foundation, SPF Cushion Foundation in the shade Fair. And that is what she looks like. This only comes in six shades, but it is, you know, very, very light coverage, but I'm still not gonna defend six shades. But it's blurring, it's nice. It is slightly hydrating. It's in a cushion, which is not my favorite because it's so little product, but it's a good, it's a good little cushion foundation if that's your thing. Next, let's go in with our friend, Tower 28 Sunny Days. I'm gonna go right on my nose with this one. I have this in shade Melrose. It will probably be one of the darkest colors that you see on my skin today. They sent this to me because I did a sponsored video when they released it. I love this stuff, I do. It's just, you don't see it on my channel very often because I have not been in my summertime skin tone. This is very, very summertime for me. The undertone is perfect, but the color is just a little tiny bit deep. I have to work kind of hard to get it to, you know, lighten up in the right places, but that's not, it's not that hard to compensate for. And it's just, it's so pretty. It's so pretty, but it does stay pretty glowy. I would say that, at least in my experience, it's one of the dewier skin tints that I have. And so that's gonna take away from wear time slightly, but it can tolerate powder. It's very, 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 very thin. Very thin and lightweight on the skin. It's really lovely. You can see it's already drying down. So it has like almost like a glycerin-y finish to it when it dries down that's very perfecting and blurring, but definitely not 
at all like this kind of satin finish that you get from like the Laura Mercier or the Lisa Eldridge. Next I'm gonna go with the Rare Beauty. We're kind of in the middle right now as far as coverage is concerned. So like some of these are gonna be a little less and a little bit more, you know? It's not gonna be like a perfect gradient in terms of that, but I will try to explain the differences because I do think that the Rare Beauty has just maybe not even slightly more coverage, but more buildability than the Tower 28 because it just has more pigment per drop of product, you know? And so you can wear it more thinly and you can really spread it out. None of these should be used as your only SPF. I think that goes without saying, but I say it anyway. But like, so, so beautiful, that Rare Beauty. It's so beautiful. It's just like instant skin. It's so pretty. And it also has a little bit, it's like halfway in between, probably a little closer to the Tower 28, but it has like a touch of that extreme, like well people kind of like juiciness, right? When you put it on your skin where you feel like your skin is going to like soak up the hydration a little bit in the best way possible. It's just been the one that I've been reaching for the most lately. It's also, I have it in 14W and it's just such a good shade match. So that's the other reason I keep reaching for it. Bare Minerals, Complexion Rescue. I have this in Opal 01. This is one I wear so often on my own time, but here's the thing with Bare Minerals is they just don't come out with products that often. And that's great. More power to them, honestly. <laughs> But that does mean that like, you know, the shiny objects are flying right in our faces a lot more often. And so I, I try to talk about this and mention it in the same sentence, in the same breath as other beautiful skin tints all the time. But the fact is I use it off camera a lot more than I talk about it on camera. Oh, it's just gorgeous. It's so pretty. Look what it just did kind of blurring my under eye right there. And it also does have a really pleasant dry down, but I kind of feel like it wears in on the day. All of these really will, but this one really starts to behave like, like a really pretty blurring skincare. It goes on so beautifully. And it's like one of the only skin tints I feel like that I can get it so thin that I don't really feel like I need to wear any other makeup. It's almost just a tinted SPF. You know how a lot of SPFs just have a tint to them. That's kind of how this one is, but you can still see there's like a line of demarcation right there. It does have some coverage. It's so pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at that. It like blurs the pores and also my skin loves it. Bare Minerals makes very, very gentle products, at least as far as my experience is concerned. I have never had any issue with like skin irritation or breakouts or anything with a Bare Minerals product. Oh, the one everybody keeps asking about, the Fenty Ease Drop. That was the thing that was mentioned once or twice in the questions and then more in the comments for my this or that video from Sephora. And I was like, okay. I have to cut this video off at some point because I'd already been filming for so long and I just swore I would give the the proper due to the eavesdrop because it is just so beautiful. And that's not everybody's opinion. A lot of people really, really hate this product. Oh, did you just see that? Did you just see like how it... It has a lot more, co I mean, a lot more coverage. It, we're, we're talking relatively speaking. I think the most coverage we're gonna get today is like a six, you know what I mean, out of 10. But it does, it has a lot more coverage than a lot of the other ones. And it's also a little bit more matte than a lot of these other ones. So it's like, we're kind of moving in the direction of more coverage. Like it's, oh, it photographs beautifully. It is very much a Fenty take, if you're familiar with the way that Rihanna, you know, likes to formulate things, is a Fenty take on a skin tint. It has wear time. A lot of people don't like it. A lot of people say it like clings to dry spots and stuff like that. I have never had one moment of a problem with the Fenty Ease Drop. And unlike some of her other stuff, it doesn't have like a scent or anything, which is great <laughs> because that body sauce breaks me out if I wear it like more than a day in a row, but this is just so utterly beautiful, utterly beautiful, really comfortable on the skin. And like, I would wear it to an event where I want to look effortless, but I also don't want to look shiny in pictures or have my SPF reflect or something like that. Like not my wedding day, cause it's not ultra perfected, but it looks better than reality even in person, which is wonderful. It's just, I really, really like it. Realized while I was editing this, I was like, there was a reason I threw this entire thing into the bin and then I just moved it out of the way <laughs> to swatch all the skin tints, not realizing that I had told 
future khaki to remember to swatch the sneaky bomb. That was like the main reason. So I was reminded because I was like doing my own makeup and I was using the sneaky balm underneath my eyes. So you can get, and I actually decided to make a scale of like minimum to maximum arbitrary coverage that you'll see on the spreadsheet. You can get like 0.5 out of sneaky balm, but you can build it to like a 3.5. It's probably like granted, you're gonna wanna powder it if you do that because it's kind of like the glossy stretch concealer. When you build it, you notice the emollients a little bit more, but it's not quite, it's got more pigment to it than the stretch concealer does, but it has one of the largest ranges as it pertains to my arbitrary scale of coverage. That's kind of why I forgot to think of it as a skin tint is because it's almost just a concealer to me, but you can use it as a skin tint and it's beautiful as a skin tint. So we get to swatch that for you guys real quick. So, I mean, that's one swatch. You can build her up and not in an uncomfortable way either. And you get, you know, a skin tint slash concealer blemish camouflaging, you know, amount of coverage. But I can also blend that out and I'm not blending it away. And it just becomes this completely invisible skin perfector. So, yeah. <laughs> Ugh, there are so many, <laughs> I really tried to remember and I still forgot. So there is the, the sneaky bomb for you guys. All right, let's go. Number one de Chanel, the revitalizing foundation. This is their Ulta exclusive line and it is quite skin tinty. It's very, very pretty. It's quite quite fragranced, really smells like a French bubble bath. And it's also a quite expensive. So uh, I think it's like $70. And that's why you don't see me use it on camera very much is because I really like, while it's gorgeous, it came out right at the same time as so many other things. And by the way, I have this in the shade B10. It came out at the same time as so many other things that I was like, okay, I mean, reach for Kosas, reach for Laura Mercier, reach for, uh, what else? Tower 28, something like that, that is just n nowhere near that price and has pretty much the same effect on the skin. It's so pretty, it really is, but it's not worth $70 and putting up with a fragrance if you're not excited about it being Chanel, you know? But it's absolutely gorgeous. It really, really is. And it apparently has like a lot of skincare benefits, but my skin doesn't love a lot of fragrance. And so, I just don't reach for it very often. Okay, next. We're gonna do the old Kosa's skin tint versus the new Kosa's skin tint. Neither of them is actually called a skin tint. This is the tinted oil. I have this in the shade one. This was Kosa's original take on a foundation. And it has more coverage than you would think and it is more matte than you would think. But I find that it's just a very polarizing formula for people because it's weird. It's thin, it's an oil, it's literally just dirt and oil. <laughs> very, very ingeniously combined dirt and oil. It is exactly the same as the Josie Marin version, exactly the same as the Vapor version. And I just don't reach for it that often because it doesn't really do super well with other products. It's very, very pretty on its own, and I feel like it was pretty good with the older Kosa's formulas, but trying to just combine it with like things that want to commit more on my skin, concealers and blushes and things like that, it just, in my experience, it just wasn't really up to the task. So, Kosa's re recently released this very, very beautiful Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. This is an SPF 25. I wear the shade 120. I'm gonna put this, what? Right here on my Melasma mustache. It has quite a bit of coverage, I feel like. I mean, it's not foundation level coverage. I mean, they call it a foundation khaki. Either way, I don't feel like it necessarily commits to the point where you can't get sheer coverage out of it. I think that like that kind of becomes the, the tipping point is like if it has a preferred level of coverage, the rose ink, for example, does, and it's not going to build. But like the NARS that I'm gonna talk about in a second, 
it's so foundation-y that it's actually hard to get it to kind of sheer all the way out and be behave like a skin tint. This has that versatility. It's very perfecting, it's very pretty, it's very skincare-y, but it also has some really lovely blur to it. It doesn't have any of the like light refraction kind of thing that makes me really, you know, gravitate towards that Laura Mercier, but it does have more coverage than the Laura Mercier. And I feel like it's gonna be really good for a lot of ages because it's super, super hydrating. It really just behaves like a very highly pigmented skincare product with a lot more like long wearing like foundation properties. It's, it's very, very pretty. It's very, very pretty. I like it a lot. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about that NARS. Let's talk about it. Okay. So this is the NARS light reflecting foundation. I'm actually going to put this like all the way over here because it's going to be probably one of the most high coverage ones that we do. But like, I just want to show you guys what it looks like when I put on a found, like <laughs> my camera is actually working. Do not adjust your televisions. It's like, you know, if I try and really, really shear that out, it starts to kind of like not behave like it wants to. The thinnest you want to get it is still a nice level of like even coverage. The pigment really wants to be more present than that. So, um, and you can kind of feel it resisting it a little bit. And so I do find that like it is a more, found, it's called a foundation, but I think that that's like where we top out in terms of like something that could be perceived as a skin tint, but is, is more of a foundation is the NARS light reflecting. And anybody new might be like, are you kidding me? That is still such low coverage. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> Welcome to No Makeup Makeup YouTube. I'm just kidding. I don't, I'm not mascara and chapstick YouTube. I, I can appreciate just about any coverage level, but I do feel like most of my foundations really top out at like medium coverage. You know, this is like me, true medium coverage. Okay, <laughs> I put this in my brands that I never shopped from video. And this is Morphe 2. A hint, hint, skin tint, and hint of marshmallow. Not my fave, not my fave, not my fave. It just, it just kind of behaves like a watered down foundation. You can really see the pigment particles in it. There's no technology here. It kind of reminds me of the first ColourPop foundation where as soon as I put it on, I was like, I feel like the ingredients weren't friends with each other. And as soon as I put it on my skin, they went get away from me and they just separated. So yeah, there's nothing particularly like doing me any favors. Look at it like latching onto my mustache and being impossible to like, no, no, no. It's just like mattifying. And it just like cheap makeup. It looks like cheap makeup. The trick is to buy makeup that is inexpensive, that performs like luxury. It shouldn't look as cheap as it is, Morphe. Surprise me. You know? Now here's one that, yes, they have raised the price recently, but everyone has. The Typology Skin Tint, Serum Tint. I recommend this to just about anybody. It is a silicone free skin tint. It's so beautiful. This is the shade one, and it is like ultimate effortless skin tint vibes. And the only drawback I feel like is that it has so few shades, but they do a thing where they will sell you the first one at full price and the second one at half price. If you need to mix shades, if you're between shades, it has no silicones in it and it is very, very skincare oriented. They only have two complexion products and I don't like their concealer. They didn't even have a shade for me in their concealer, but this skin tint is beautiful and I still love it very, very much. Lee. Uncomplaining, it's so, just really nourishing, but it doesn't run all over the place and kind of disappoint you the way that like the Kosa's original one did, you know, the way that it's like really polarizing. I feel like anybody would be like, wow, that's really pretty <laughs> on their skin. All right, we have just a few left here. We have the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. And this is, at least on me, I've heard different takes from different people, but like, I feel like this is ultra dewy. And a lot of people are like, I get coverage out of it. And sometimes it's really nice and like, you know, matte on me. I'm like, um, not me. Some people also truly hate the smell. The smell doesn't bother me. It kind of smells like plants. It's outrageously nourishing for me to the point that 
it can make my makeup slip around. So I wouldn't recommend it necessarily for oily skinned people, but it's so pretty, but it's also like pretty much zero coverage. I should have put it up here <laughs> because it's just so little coverage, but it's a beautiful finish on the skin. Here we have the Kierweiss. I bought this in the wrong shade, but this is their liquid foundation that has the most obnoxious little applicator I've ever seen because it traps air and doesn't want to pick up the product. It's very pretty, but it has a very strong fragrance and I don't love this shade on me. I don't understand why. Oh, the fragrance is so, it's just the opposite of my personality. And it sucks because it's like, Kierweiss makes some of those beautiful products and they were so neck and neck with other stuff for me for such a long time. And then they started putting fragrances and everything. I guess to be perceived as, you know, more luxury or something like that, but the fragrance that they chose is like powdered, desiccated daisies or something. I don't know. I don't like it, but it's really, really pretty. <laughs> it's super pretty. I just have so many, I'm not gonna reach for that. And it's too expensive. Again, here's one that doesn't really count as a skin tint, but it's among all these ones that were just released. And this is the Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation from Charlotte Tilbury. And I have it in one neutral. And I'll just put her right here. It's definitely still a foundation, but it has a dewy finish and, you know, about the same coverage level, I feel like, as her, what was that stuff called? Light Wonder? I personally, is that a fragrance? No. I personally would really love to go back to using the Light Wonder, but I think she needs to reformulate it because it still has octanoxate in it. So I don't use it for that reason. But it's still quite pretty. I like it a lot. I just don't end up reaching for it because I think that the Kosas is a better version of kind of what she was going for. It's a little more coverage than the Kosas, but if I was going for a little bit more coverage, I'd probably go for the NARS. And that's just my personal opinion. It doesn't mean that if you own it, it's a terrible product. It's not. It's gorgeous. I think it's really, really pretty. It's just not my favorite. They've, for the things that it's going for, I have other favorites. <laughs> It's out. We have two more. We'll see if I can wedge them onto my face. And again, these don't really count, but I sort of wanted to swatch them anyway. And it's good because I have two more spots right here. So I have the Dior Backstage Face and Body, which kind of, you know, it's like this soupy skin tint. This is zero W and I mean, goodness gracious, is that warm, huh? That is, that is very, very light yellow. Looks like Easter eggs. But uh, I found that this mixed so beautifully with the In Beauty Face Glaze recently, and I was able to get a glowier finish on it because it does dry down a little tiny bit matte for my taste, but it's still very pretty. I just feel like it doesn't have like enough technology in it to make me reach for it that often, but in order to get use out of it, I would absolutely just mix it with the In Beauty Face Glaze. I like that they have a huge shade range. It does lend itself well to makeup artist kits and things like that, but it also has a massive fragrance. It is really, really loud. It smells, woo, it's just, it's, it's a Dior smell. So again, that's another reason I don't reach for it all that often. And topping out the category for things that should be skin tints, but my dog's attacking the door, um, have way too much coverage to be considered a skin, skin tint and have way too much fragrance for anything, <laughs> full stop is the new Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin. I hate to pick on this because you guys know, or you should know, <laughs> if you've watched any of my other videos where I talk about anything from Danessa Myricks, let me add context. I think she's a genius. She does texture so well. She's so creative. I love her makeup, but this one flopped for me. It is so strongly fragranced. It's so wildly like fruity scented and the shade range is a little bit wild because I bought three in 3P and it is so, 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 ah, so light. And maybe that just means that, you know, she's got a very exhaustive shade range, but it's supposed to give you yummy skin and it gives me chalky high intensity coverage. Like I just want to remove like three quarters of it every single time that I use it because it's just too intense. 
and that's why there's the little primer that you're supposed to mix with it. It's also extremely heavily scented, and I just feel like it just, after all of that, it's just not something that I really like the look of or the behavior of, and it's just not something that I reach for because there are better things that I don't have to spend that much money on and I don't have to spend that much time mixing them and things like that. So, you know, I understand that there is a customer for that. It just isn't me. So those are all my skin tints and you can, you know, see how it kind of goes from no coverage to medium coverage to coverage over here, for better or worse. And these are all things that survived a recent declutter with the exception of the yummy stain because that was brand new. That means that I do think that they all still belong in my routine at some point or another. And that means that I will probably reach for them again at some point. I do like them. I just like some of them more than others, you know, for my particular needs. I'm still as diplomatic as I try to be about presenting the pros and cons of every product. I do still have my own wants and needs from makeup. And that is why I offer a lot of background and a lot of like characteristics and things like that. The, you know, the spec sheet, the dossier for each one. And then I tell you whether or not I like it because my opinion might not matter to you. It might just be important to you, like what it looks like. And hopefully, hopefully I have attempted at least to show you what that looks like. <laughs> Skin tints are a, a subtle animal, they are. I guess what I can do is just kind of do one of these, right? <laughs> Normally I would take a brush and do that if it was like blushes and stuff, but I basically just rub them all together and have myself a nice even skin tint, right? Yay! Yeah, so I have gone the entire video without saying my thesis statement about foundations and recent foundation new releases, skin tint new releases from all these different brands. And that is great is good. So many of them are great, but because we are absolutely awash in great formulas, they are all good. I mean, the ones that I spoke highly of, don't buy Morphe too, it's not very good. But most of the ones that I spoke highly of with the caveats in mind, you're probably going to be perfectly happy with. You're gonna be able to make them work. It's just that, you know, if something is truly, truly excellent, it's going to rise to the top. So those are my thoughts on my skin tint collection. Yes, I did blow my nose and that is why it's red again. I hope you guys found this valuable. Again, I'm going to attach the spreadsheet down below for your future reference. Do not ask to edit it. Capricorns. If you did enjoy this, please do give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. You can check out all of the links down below to all of the skin tints I mentioned. And I highly encourage you to check out all of the new gorgeous offerings from Osea, gentle, effective, beautiful skincare that I've been loving lately. Thank you to Osea for partnering with me for this video. It, the pleasure has been all mine. <laughs> um, I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.